I'm here incognito. The real reason is I'm going to speak to John and Carolyn Radford. I'm going to try and get the inside story of how they felt all about this season. But unfortunately, in coming to do this, I had to have an undercover job. And I asked Mark Stevenson, the press officer, what would be the best thing I could do. And he said, we'll get you sweeping up. Well, one is what must be going, going through your minds at the moment where, you know, not that many hours away from the game that could take Mansfield back into the league. Something that you vowed to do first, John, when you came to Mansfield Town, something that is on the verge of happening. What, what, well, what's in your head? Well, Tony, I, well, I know that we're in the playoffs at least, but a win today um, would be absolutely fantastic. I will... I will be having quite a few glasses of champagne, let me tell you. What's he been like at, at home, Carolyn, over the, the last few weeks? Because at one stage this season, you were languishing a little bit down the table and yeah. uh, people were saying it's not going to happen, it's no. not going to happen. Some people no. were saying maybe we've got the wrong manager and he was saying, I'll stick by him. But what was it like at home? Um, it was a very tense period of time, let's say. Um, we always had faith in Paul Cox, um, and we still do. Um, and it's really important for us that we've got a loyal manager. Um, we always had faith in the boys and the team, um, and I really don't think that they'll let anybody down. But at that same instant as well, you know, we have those real, you know, moments of, of fear sometimes when it doesn't all go to plan. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a game. It's a game of football, and. Uh, you know, there can be big upsets and Wrexham are a good solid team and uh, you know we're hoping their minds are going to be on the playoffs a little bit but uh, it's there it's all it, it's all to play for and um, I know that our boys are going to go out there they're going to go out there wanting to win and they're going to go really strong into the game. How nervous are you? Well, let's start with Carolyn. How nervous are you? Um, very actually. I've, I've, I've tended to have this like sickening feeling for the past couple of weeks uh, and it doesn't it's not fading yet but hopefully on Saturday it should, it should start to <laughs> subside. Um, it's a, a question of sleeping at night even, John. I mean, uh, do, 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 you, do you wake up in the night and, and think it through and start doing point calculations over the last few weeks, that sort of thing? No, no, Tony, I've been totally different from that. I mean, Karen's taken a lot of the nerves away from me. Um, I'm not nervous about this game at all. Um, I feel quite confident about it. And I, you know, I, I'm, you know, and I think it's, it's there where, it's, it's in our hands and our destiny is in our hands and uh, I think we've got the team to do it this year and you know look at that marvellous run they went on 12 wins unbeaten so um, we should do it Tony and let, let me take you to a negative moment Carolyn Braintree mm -hmm. they go ahead they go uh, level to Braintree they fight their way back and then they and Braintree win it. Yeah. I mean, what was that evening like? Well, that's the, the thing Radford. about that's what? the thing about football is that you just never know how it's going to go. You just you know you can you can be so confident and think it's a no-brainer, <laughs> uh, and it doesn't go your way. And it's one of those things that you've just got to really pick yourself up and continue and carry on. And and at home it's very difficult because you know it, we invest so much into um, the individuals here and. You know, we want to, it so badly for the, for the town. Um, and, you know, you've got literally got to go, right, OK, never mind, but let's move on. But it hurts, and it really does. And we can play devil's advocate here um, and say, well, we're confident. And, uh, and I can say, well, I'm actually bricking it. Um, but, you know, it's, it, it is one of those things where it, it stirs passion, football, and... Um, and I'm very nervous, but you know, yeah, John, never mind that. that's hey, why we're a good yeah, team. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have not, Carolyn Rutherford, answered my question. So I'm going to go to John. What was that <laughs> evening like after the Braintree game? Well, I think every Mansfield fan was down. And you're, a little bit down. <laughs> you, you're a little bit down in the in the dumps. Um, what were you like? I I wasn't best pleased with um, you know the result and the, the, uh, the you know the obvious result went against us as well. So, but uh, same as Karen says, it's a case of you pick yourself up and get on with it and. I think, you know, the squad that we've got now is well capable of winning this league. And, um, you know, I really do hope today that we are champions and we don't have to go into a playoff situation. What about the Hereford game then? It's, uh, it's one all. 
getting to the close of the game and you know perhaps still the psychological advantage going the, the Kidderminster at, at that stage just about and then the goal I mean can you can you explain the, the emotions between 1-1 one, one and 2-1 <laughs> go on Carolyn what was you what were you like Carolyn well, I, I'll tell you myself first no, of all I'll, I'll butt you, on this one. Yeah. because I mean it, it was very emotional down there and you know sometimes you think that sometimes the whole league's against Ma well the, the only people that want Mansfield to win are Mansfield because I yeah. mean they'd, they'd invited people in for Curry they you know we had the Kidderminster directors on the table at the side of us so but a for a small club, Kitty are doing all right. Mm. But, you know, it's it's one of those things, isn't it? That uh, <laughs> Let's get to that moment when that goal went oh, in. No, was, Matt we, Green we, gets we, it. We were hugging each other and we were jubilant. Our what fans, was that? You uh, and the Kidderminster directors? No, they were, set somewhere, <laughs> they were sat somewhere else. Uh, we were jumping up and down. But it was it, fantastic. How, how much do they want us, these players and manager? They just want... They want me to just have that panic heart attack completely, I think, <laughs> sometimes. Because, oh, can you believe it? 92 minutes. Yeah, I agree so with it. Yeah, I, was, I was confident. We, I mean, yeah. we, we did look. <laughs> I was confident. We, were, we looked the better team, and uh, it, w it would have been against one of the players if we had not come away from with three points. Yeah. And, you know, we still, we're still in the same situation we were drawn. It's a case of today, we have to win. We have to win, and, uh, you know, we just have been a case of we'd have to win by a lot more goals. Mm. Um, but, uh, I mean, today we don't really have to win now because of that result, but uh, I would like a win and uh, I think the boys have gotten in. It'd be great to win a championship and win on the day. Absolutely. Do and win everything and on the day. And they worked so hard for it. And everybody here, you know, completely given themselves to the football club and, uh, and I really hope that they're all rewarded for it because... Um, you know, there's a lot of effort that's gone in by yeah, a lot of people. Yeah, some of our players. I mean, Beavers, I mean, he's got his shoulder knocked out at the end, yeah. didn't he? <laughs> do, you, do you talk to the players, John, first of all? Will you talk to them? Have you talked to them today yet? Or will you no, talk I won't talk to them before. I don't talk to them before a match. I'll congratulate them after a match. That's, you mm -hmm. know, that's your manager's job to go and do the pre-match talk. So yeah. you don't, don't get involved with that, Tony. And you, Caroline, I know you, you're chief executive of the club. Yeah. Uh, do you talk to the players much no, on a day-to-day -day -day basis? I, I remain, um, you know, I want to remain away from all that kind of thing. I don't think it's my role. Um, I leave that to the to the manager. Um, obviously, you know, I know them and I'll say hello and I hear everything that's going on by my manager, but I really believe in that kind of, you know, um, that that system of, um, of removing yourself sometimes. Um, you know, um, I'll, you know, we she'll intervene. Tell, she'll tell the manager off a few times. Yeah, that's we intervene, about it, really. but that's, that's, how, that's how, it, how it has to be, I think, in order to work. I want to ask John a question. You'd be quite pleased for just a moment. Yeah. yeah. What is she like in a game? Is she like a chief executive or is she like the, the biggest Mansfield fan? Does she, does she lose it? Does she lose she it? She turns into the biggest Mansfield fan, I think. And a lot of the Mansfield fans will know that, you know. You went and got yourself arrested at York and you did your yeah. dance and everything. Yeah, but let's talk about it. Let's, <laughs> let's be very passionate about the club, Tony. Let's, let's, talk, let's, talk about, let's talk about York. Yeah, you know. I mean, you have... I, I, I was going to say you've caught, oh, grown up. Well, let's, uh, you've courted, you have caught, you were courted by him. Yeah, mm. but you've courted controversy ever yeah. since you arrived at this. Yeah. How difficult has it been to live with that? First of all, um, it, it's kind of, uh, I've I've had to put up with a lot of, of of sticks that have been thrown at me, and sometimes there's been rocks thrown at me, um, and um, yeah, I found it very. Uh, bizarre to be honest and obscure and um, particularly the York incident you know it's one that um, I am going to take up and have taken up. Were you at fault? Were you at fault? Um, I believe that it was a completely misunderstood um, situation and you know and I feel bad for York that they're getting relegated now. She, she, went, down to put, she <laughs> went down to put her arm around Riles who had just been just come off the pitch and it was quite irate and she went to the rescue of one of our football players yeah. and she has to do that as a chief exec and the next you know the next minute she's got 10 police officers jumping on top yeah, of her and throwing it, to the back of a van. Ridiculous scenario. It, she wouldn't harm but she wouldn't harm a fly and you know it was and really everything unfair was out and it was actually very very um, you know it was a, it was a very horrible experience for me. I've never even had points on my license. <laughs> no, but you said you've grown up. Now, what, is that? what does up. that mean? I think I grow but, all I mean, the it, time. Yeah. You know, well, she's not going to go to a rescue of one of our players if you're surrounded by police so quickly now. You're going to be very careful what you say. Yeah, no, it's it's it, it has been a huge learning curve, you know. And, uh, you know, like John said, I, I do get kind of passionate and very protective over people, you know, because... 
these people do a lot for us, you, you know, footballers and the, the club and, you know, we are very, you know, dedicated to the cause and it's like a family, you know, so, you know, it's trying to alleviate the situation, um, definitely not trying to harp a one um, and um, uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, it was completely taken out of hand. Let's put that beside though, I'm, I'm more interested in the growing up. How have you changed? How are, you look in the mirror now, Carolyn, and what do you see that you've changed? So I've put on a few pounds. <laughs> 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 well, um, it looks like there's more meat on his chip. But mm, anyway, no. Go on. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, I've, I've, I think it's, it's um, I've learnt to sort of, you know, delegate and take my responsibility um, as chief exec um, in a very, you know, professional manner. Um, I feel like I've taken the club and, you know, I'm lifting it day by day as, um, as productively as I can um, and I'll continue to do so in terms of you know um, making the right contacts and for the business and you know driving things forward on a on a bigger level um, and um, you know it's it's um, it's our life and um, you know we we live and breathe the football club and I remember you being at a dinner and you were speaking at a luncheon for the Chamber of Commerce, mm. and you were talking about women in football, and you said that women, there should be more women chief executives, and I love the way you laughed when you said it, and you said, uh, how many other people have got the chairman's ear at five o'clock in the morning? This is true. <laughs> does that, exactly. now, Mr. and Mrs. Radford, does that happen? Does she lean over and bring up, John, some, some point on the football club yeah, at five certainly. o'clock in the morning? Yeah, yeah, certainly she does, yeah. She's 24-7, <laughs> isn't it, really? Yes. Yeah. So, but, uh, no, it's all good stuff. I mean, I'm passionate about the football club anyway, so it doesn't bother me yeah. too much. But uh, she doesn't let I things play on her mind. No, I don't. And I'm learning that as well. You know, that's been a growing thing because, you know, it's, it is all consuming. And, um, and I have to remain very focused on the parts that I need to do. Um, and so that means that I don't, you know, read widely about people's opinions of me and things like that. I have to just, you know, be very structured in my day and just, uh, you know, remain focused and on task. I, I've heard, and it's not for this, this programme to, to talk about it, but yeah, I've heard of some of the plans that, that you've got. I've spoken to some of the people be behind the scenes, which yeah. are things that will develop in, in, into the future, and, 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 and they're very exciting. But you were brought in here for a, a business purpose, to be the chief executive. Uh, why did you marry her? I mean, you, you'd, already, you'd already got her on the staff. I mean, did, did you need any more <laughs> control than that, John? Tony, I'm in love with her, so, you know, so she's my wife. And so, uh, no, we, 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 we enjoy each other's company and, uh, you know, we work together and play together. We, we have a great time, don't we? Yeah. You have a other life than the Mansfield Town. I know I've had the pleasure of seeing some of the things that are involved in your life. I was kindly invited to... Uh, along with others, to, to some great celebrations at, at your home. Uh, uh, and I've seen your kindness too. I've seen what you did when, when Paul Cox and, and Tasha got married. I mean, are you giving something back? Are you, are, you, are you feeling you're giving something back to people? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, I grew up in, in, in Mansfield and, uh, you know, started my life there in the Shybrook area and then moved up onto the Oak Tree Lane estate. And, you know, it's... Moved away from Mansfield for a few years, then came back to the town. It's nice to be able to put something back into a community where you sort of where you started out your life and you spent most of your your, your life as you know as I spent the formative years of my life. So it's great to be in a situation to be able to put something back into the club um, and sorry into the town. And to, you know, hopefully, if we can get the cl club to prosper, things in the, things in the town and things in the local area, yeah. the, the, it, it'll, it'll sort of hopefully that will start to to prosper a little bit better and things will. The whole the momentum of a successful football club can help bring the town along as well, I believe. Carolyn, it was very kind. She allowed me into some of your personal mail, or at least one of your personal letters. And it, it's, <laughs> it's from it's from. Sorry about this. It's from John Ryan at Doncaster Rovers Football Club. Yeah, you're aware of what's it what's in the letter. You were involved with Doncaster Rovers Football Club, and it's a letter when he says, "I've been watching your results with great interest and this great run that you're on." And he he's wishing you every success to get into the league. Doncaster wet your appetite, didn't they? Yeah, but I mean, uh, Mansfield Town's my club, Tony, and uh, I'm sure me and John will be very competitive when we get Mansfield Town into the same league as them, and uh, uh, I think the Stags will do them, to be honest with you. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, John Ryan's he's, he's, he's a good friend, and I, I wish him all the best. I'll send him a letter back, which 
you know, I think they they're just going up as champions. So hopefully they'll they'll go up as champions and we will. You want to go up this time. You don't want to go to Wembley or anything like that, do you? There's not a little bit in you that says, you know, we you've been to Wembley. I was at Wembley with you. Wembley. In a way, you say we're in the playoffs now, but to be back into the playoffs after the end of today, would you say that in a way was was failure? How can, how can that be failure if you've got, you know, that, that's not failure being in the playoffs. Um, no matter what, the team's been successful this season. Um, of course, I want us to be champions, and all the boys want to be champions. Um, but there are, there are good. We've got this match to do today, um, and I'm hoping I'm going to be celebrating in a few hours, Tony, us being champions. But if we have to go, if we have to go to uh, through the playoffs and uh, get to Wembley, then hopefully I'll be celebrating that way. Um, fingers crossed, I'm celebrating one way of us getting out of this league. Um, and I, I really do hope it's you know with all my heart and 100% of it's we're going to be champions. Have you practiced your dance moves? Yeah. What, how now? How does this dance go? Um, you know, you've just got to you've got to be really in the dance. moment. Um, you know, really feel it. Pra you just scored a goal against Liverpool. Perhaps for the camera, for, for the camera, the dance. Can you do it? Can you do it again now? Can you show it's us? Like get, get the movements like this. Come on. <laughs> John, can you do it? Can you do it? Yeah, just about, yeah. Well, I'm not going to do it in tandem. We'll, we'll see that. Let's do that. We'll do that celebration if we win, Tony. Yeah, okay. is that a promise? We'll, yeah, we'll we'll get, you'll we'll see get, me and Carolyn with the side of each other. We'll get, it. <laughs> we'll, we'll, get, we'll get the two of you doing yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What will you feel like if it's around what are we going to be talking about now? We're going to be talking about seven o'clock, aren't we? About mm -hmm. seven, seven o'clock today, that referee's whistle goes. Mm -hmm. And your, your Mansfield town, place where you were born, or in the football league, what would you feel like? I think um, it's going to be a euphoric moment. We're just going to be really sort of delighted and <laughs> take yeah, that. and uh, you know, yeah. and uh, it'll be a fantastic situation for myself and lots of Mansfield Town fans. And you know, the, the, the thing is that the support that I've had in the two and a half years, well, three, and a half, three years of being here, has been fantastic from the fans. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to really enjoy the moment, Tony, and I really do hope it happens. What if it doesn't? How will you feel then? How will you cope with that? How will you? Oh, then we've got to pick ourselves up and get ourselves ready for the playoffs. Um, and it won't be long to go before. I know. That's um, that's that's something that um, at this moment in time I don't really want to think about. I don't want to think take about that sort of thing. Let's, yeah. let's take it one match at a time and let's go for three points on Saturday. If you go up, what happens then as far as the... Let's have the euphoria and the celebration. But have you got a bus? I, I think the uh, you have to speak to Paul Broughton, our ops director. I Paul? think he has organised. Yeah, yeah, we have, we have, got, we have got a bus for the Sunday. Yeah. Are you going to drive it, John? If they'll let me. <laughs> I think there might be too much alcohol running around in my system. I think the day after, but uh, I think I, I believe there's a bus going around the um, town centre, around the market square, with players and ourselves on it, yeah. uh, midday on uh, the Sunday. Halfway through the season, did you believe that there was the, the chance of this happening when you, you, you slipped quite a way down the table? Was there a belief? Was there really a belief, John? Of course there was, yeah. Tony. Yeah, there I said I, said I was going to... You were thinking of the playoffs at best, though, weren't you? you weren't thinking no, of not no. at all. Not at all. I mean, you know... Well, well I think it was Wrexham was escaping at that time, weren't they, wasn't it? No, they weren't going... Yeah, they, they, weren't, they, weren't going they weren't going... You had all sorts of people... Yeah, yeah they weren't going far enough, in, yeah. far enough in front. I mean, you know... Uh, the manager's always been a bit of a slow starter when it comes to season things like that and sorting the team out and getting the getting the boys playing right for him um and you know his pre previous seasons he's been good at the, the finishing side of things so um no i had confidence that we'd be up and in the playoffs at the very least but f you know my my aim was for the championship financially getting into the league I and mean, carolyn probably it, it may be a question that, that should go to you as the chief executive how much does it mean in, in terms of almost immediate finance? Do you, because you, you, presumably then you've got to look at players, different types of well, contracts. Well, exactly. You know, we always put uh, put everything back into the football club anyway. So whilst you would get, you know, parachute payment and you get a prize for winning the league and things, obviously the costs are a hell of a lot higher as well when you're in League Two. Um, so um, we fully intend to, um, you know, go straight to the top of League Two as well. 
um, win championship. Though we do, though, don't we? We've got. We've got uh, have you we've told got your main years. financier what he's supposed to do next year? She's yeah, taking it. Of course, yes, I yes, have. Yes, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And um, you know, we've, we're very heavy into reinvesting. You know, anything back in because we know our our, our cl very clear vision um, and goals, and we know how how we need to approach it in order to 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 achieve these goals. And I assure you that. Uh, you know, I always say this that John uh, is a very successful person. He and he succeeds. He's got that tenacity and um, an almost intuition. It's a, it's like a feeling that entrepreneurs kind of have. And you know, John John has it in in buckets. And I, I have I've every faith. This is why we have you know the two different sides. Is that I often worry and think, oh, what, what do we do, John, is no, if we do it this way, we do this, we do this, you know, it will happen. And so that's why, you know, it's very, uh, you know, I'm very confident that, you know, people should get behind the team because we won't let you down. Are you yeah. both here for the long, long haul? Yeah. Of course we are. How far? How far can that trip, that long haul, what, 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 what's do. the aim, what's We'd the target? Like to, I, I always say, <laughs> okay. five-year plan. <laughs> So yeah, okay, let's go into, to five years. Where, if where we you can get where? into the Premier Premier League <laughs> yeah. and an oil baron comes and buys us out, then, you yeah. know, it's in better hands because uh, we can't compete with buying all those kind of players, probably. John, is she in any way realistic? Mansfield yeah, Premier yeah. League? Well, no, I think what uh, I think my, t my, my aim was <laughs> to try and make the club so that it, that it, become, it can get very close to being self-sufficient. Um, and so that if, you know, if... I, I can't see this at all, Tony. If you know, if me and Karen weren't be, to be here, the club would be able to run itself and not get itself into the state that it was previously. And uh, you know, when we, when we took the club over, it was into a, it was in, uh, there was masses of debt built up mm -hmm. all over the place. They'd not paid the they'd not paid the revenue bill for God knows how many months. And uh, you know, it, it it got itself into a state um, because of the way its finances were run. And uh, so I don't intend that, and I don't intend that. To, I certainly won't ever leave the club in that sort of state. Charlie, when you came in, how, uh, he, he, John said it was a very bad state. How close was it if you, you hadn't come in to, to going? In it? Yeah, they, they'd, they'd, they'd got the, um, the, the, the previous guys, had got the uh, liquidators in, and they were just going through to get dismantling it. So it would have gone? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's really sad. And uh, it's you know, it's not sad because we got, we came in and saw it. Didn't no, we? It, it 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 is sad that people would let a football club get to that kind of state, you know. And you know, I might be a woman and I might do my hair like this and everything. And John, you know, people can say all these kind of things, but if you can make it self self, you know, just sustainable and yeah. as, as efficient to, as possible. It's down to it's down to it's down to where you manage things. And I can't, you know, I've got to applaud the the current management team that we've got in place. You know, we've got mm -hmm. Mr. Broughton walking through there, but that they are doing uh, you know a very good job of making sure that things are run properly money's going where it should be going and uh you know th there's th it's, it's not tight, being it's run by tight, fans as well tight, tight you, you, yeah that's a good point you made then about running by fa not being run by fans and there was a lot of fans involved but uh, you know, the, obviously the, 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 yeah you brought a lot of family in or or, or, or people from one call uh, came in and, and worked here why was that why did you need people you had well, to when do I, that? when i first when i first came into the club i um i'd, I'd left the situation it was it was just to just to see and get a grasp of the thing and uh, obviously me and carolyn were was were seeing each other then and she was looking at the books and everything and eventually she basically got me by the scruff of the neck and said john we've got to get to grips with this and immediately came in and had to get rid of quite a few people you make like a lot of changes as well. The the internal part of the, the club, your office, has got a feminine touch now, hasn't it? We have candles around, Tony. Yes, right. uh, <laughs> it's um, yeah. We've 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 got a you know big plans to to really add to the community of Mansfield. Um, you know, we've got construction opportunities that we we want to pursue, um, and we want the the club to be really at the heart of the community. Um, and uh, you know internally as well now that you know when we when we got ownership of the club and everything we knew that you know we were in here for the long haul we ma managed to um, you know put put effort into making sure that the facilities are, are better and that you know at close season again this year because obviously we don't want to do too much when matches are going on but you know there'll be more more work and renovation work and and brand new building opportunities going going up and 
it's all very exciting. You've paid uh, comments about him being positive and going for things. I went up to Durham uh, recently, to Durham University, yeah. um, university you know well, yeah. and I thought I'd make some inquiries into a, a Carolyn Radford student. Yeah. You, you, you've got, you've got two degrees that uh, you, you first of all you've got your, your, your ordinary BA and then you decided to do a, a law degree as well yeah, yeah. I mean so you were, you were becoming a bit of a professional student at that time weren't you? um yes I mean um I did a uh, red politics at, at, up at Durham which was fran fantastic um of three years of my life many um, people say Durham are, are right up there with Oxford and Cambridge they, well, what do they call it Dox Cambridge, they call it Durham. Docksbridge don't they now uh, when they're up there yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Darling, it's not Oxford's Cambridge, Durham. It's Oxford's Cambridge, Bath. <laughs> <laughs> so you're the one with the degree. John, uh, 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 who's the brightest in the house? Uh, John, <laughs> by a mile. Um, yeah, he, uh, no, yeah. she's very bright. You are very bright, I think. Thank she you. does ring, ring around me sometimes. You're very much involved with the football club. You're very much involved in the family, the one call family, the business family, etc. What about the Mr. and Mrs. Radford family one day? We had lunch some, some, some time ago privately, and uh, I, I dared venture the question, children, and uh, she said no comment at, at that particular stage. I'm too busy at the moment. I mean, uh, uh, there was a wink there. I mean, would you like to? Uh, would you like to? Yeah, of course. Yeah, definitely. When are you going to have time? Um, you always make time to try and make Never babies. <laughs> 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 you have to be very careful this evening if you yeah, want. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> My, you know, Christmas, birthdays, championships. <laughs> <laughs> With the money you want him to spend, there could be a lot of children. No, seriously, you, there, there will be a, there will be Radford Juniors, will there? Isn't yeah, there? we'd like young a whole stag, young team. stags, young stags. Yeah, no, definitely. Hopefully, please God. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. That'd be something that. You know, would be right. Okay. <laughs> she said she 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 changed. I can see change, massive change. You, you did you feel when you first came, you you were sort of dancing thrown in the deep end and <laughs> dancing to music that was maybe going too fast, or you were going too fast. Yeah, it was it, it it was quite. Um, you know, I've always been a kind of rational thinker, and as you said, you know, went to quite a strict structured university, read politics. Went and you know worked down in London for six years and always you know and then sort of coming into the crazy unstructured world of football where things change from game to game so massively and the high octane you know passion of you know, it was very it was very very difficult to adjust to um, and. Uh, you know, but now I've got, and it is my team that I've got around. Now we we've, we've got a fantastic team, and we have got people around us that are that we trust and that um, you know have the club's best interests at heart. Are you growing into this to, job? Are you growing more and more into this job? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, you know, I'm 31, um, and it's it's our long term project, and you know, we do. I think. It, it, you grow obviously you know day by day um, and I just want to always achieve the best that I possibly can do and let me take your mind back for a moment we, we were both of us uh, and John were at a dinner in Nottingham um, not that long ago do you remember when Karen Brady was uh, yeah was the speaker as it was an inspire and achieve which is of course is connected with West with, with West Knox College and you and, and, and Karen spoke, spoke spoke after it. Are you the second Karen Brady or are you no this is this this is I am Carolyn Radford. Yeah, I I, I don't do you know, I don't really read read widely like I was saying about about things and you know, I'm very much kind of in a in, in the Mansfield bubble and uh, I don't want to replicate anybody because um, I'll obviously do it so much better than <laughs> than them uh, uh, no it's it's um I, it, there's hopefully going to be a lot more women involved in football in in a few years I'd like to see that kind of anarchic um, vision that you know it's still predominant um, you know hopefully it'll move on somewhat 
Um, and it won't be an unusual thing that people are saying, wow, she's a woman, she's, you know, young, because football's full of young people, you know, all of our players are all young, and it's a, it's a you know, you have to have the energy as well to be able to, to, to do the job. John, is having a, such an attractive woman an advantage or a disadvantage? Which is it? Thank you, Tony. Yeah, but well, which is it? <laughs> well, advantage or disadvantage, yeah. Yes, I think... Uh, he sees me in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't mean, I, didn't mean one, I didn't mean one for him. I didn't mean one for him. I've not really thought about it, Tony, but, uh, you know, she, she's doing a good job as chief executive and uh, the, the club's, um, you know, the, we get quite... The, 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 it's helped the club with its publicity side of things and uh, and you have always get the club in a good light, haven't you? Yeah, really? but it's, it's kind of, yeah. Sometimes it's kind of patronising for me, do you know, yeah. when you kind of... It can be well, a disadvantage for you sometimes, can't it? Yeah. yeah. So, but uh, especially with, yeah. Uh, anyway, we'll, we'll we'll move on, shall we? When you started to to think about how you would develop Mansfield Town, etc., one of the key points was was dealing with the former chairman Keith Haslam, a man that certainly was was not loved by too many of the ordinary Mansfield fans. In fact, it it would be probably fair to say that some of them, you know really disliked him intently. How difficult was that time and what did you feel you had to overcome? Well, the, the thing was, is um, we, we didn't have a ground really and we didn't, have a, we didn't have a contract that would allow us to get back into the league. So it was something that uh, I've had to try and build a new ground or acquire another ground or get, this, get, the, get a situation where I have owned this ground or have the correct lease in place. Um, and it was basically a year, a year and a half of negotiation with him, wasn't it, really? Yeah. Um, and it, it was a case of having to, you know, get involved with court, solicitors. Um, uh, but eventually, you know, we, we, we sort of ground him down and, and got him so that we could get the ground for the right price. And, uh, and we, we managed to do it uh, just before the cut-off date last season um, mm. to allow us to get promoted if we could have got promoted last season. Do you believe he today will be, be, be thinking... Uh, uh, and hoping that Mansfield Town will get back in the league. What's, what's your view on that? On, 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 yeah, I think I don't think he wishes that. I, I, I don't know. I, I, you know, it's a case of um, we got into a thing where negotiations got quite heated at some points and things like that. I don't think he wishes the club any real big malice. Um, um, and he's he's getting on with his life and doing what he wants to do with the money I've paid him for the. I've paid him for the ground. Um, I don't know if he's still involved in football or or not, really. So I don't have any. I was never his friend beforehand, and I wasn't his friend. It's, you know, uh, it was a negotiation of getting the ground back for me. I know how much time you spent in that, and the hours of time, and the phone calls, the the, the consultation with lawyers, the money that was having to be. You know, he's, he was doing the job of what he wanted to do. He wanted to get as much money as he could for the ground. Um, he was doing his businessman head. You know, you got you, you got to think that. He run this club, I think, was it 15 years or so, and he made a living out of it. You know, there's not many club chairmen actually do that in the league, so you've got to take his hat, your hat off to him a little bit for that. Um, but obviously, it got him so he fell out with a lot of the fans and things like that because he was never investing into the club. Uh, I'm a bit more fortunate in the situation that I don't have to make a living off the club, and we can invest into the club. Karen, it's often said, or certainly in years gone by, that when successful businessmen, and he is with one call. Uh, go into football or rugby or, or whatever they do, mm. they often leave their brains behind them. Yeah. Um, That's not the case here? No. Um, no, I'd say not at all. Um, I think John's very, you know, he's from Mansfield and he, you know, really, he's, you know, a Stags fan, you know, growing up and everything. And, it, yeah, he... He's a very astute businessman, and he you can't, very you can't, much separates. Yeah. separates you can't, you can't completely lose your head, Tony. If I lost my head, people and do. And, and, but if we did, then it wouldn't make the club sustainable. You'd if be I put, if I put managers every yeah, five minutes, yeah. if you listen and, to people a lot, and then it would be back into a situation that it was before yeah. I took it over, where it was just totally in the red and it wasn't wasn't sustainable. You've got to make something so it can hold its own, okay, and hold mm -hmm. its own at the right level. I don't think we're at the right level yet. The right level for Maxwell Town is a championship, which is where I want to get us, okay? And I want to get so we can hold our own in that in that league. Um, but that's that's a five-year plan, isn't it? No, that's four-year five is yeah. Premier League. <laughs> 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 He's keeping you on on your toes, John. 
One thing she's not keeping you, you on your toes with, or uh, maybe you choose it this way, uh, uh, I know that you're going to get changed a little bit later on before you meet the, the, the rectum and directors and that sort of thing, but we've been out for lunch a, a couple of times. I have to tell you that w one time when you and I met uh, for lunch just up the road from here, um, there was no one else at the restaurant and uh, you came and I didn't recognise you. Um, you're not really a dresser up all the time, are you? I mean, for such a... A successful man. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I don't know. I'm dressing quite well. This morning, uh, is, is this good? Is this uh, is this dressed yeah. up? Yeah. Uh, the I truth is, say. you made him put that scarf on before he started doing the interview, didn't you? I, I think it's a fantastic um, outfit that John's chosen today. Um, For doing what? Gardening. <laughs> No, John, you know, you have to, sometimes you have to be smart, sometimes you don't. You know, our life is is is, uh, is business, isn't it? So, and you can conduct um, business in most attires. Uh, but no, it's dress down day uh, today. Until they, they come. I, I went on, uh, I had the good fortune to, to go on your, 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 your motor yacht in, 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 in Malta. And I spoke to Henri, Henri, yeah, yeah. The, the captain. And... Uh, he was saying, yeah, yeah, you are really very, very down to earth. You're, you're, uh, for somebody who's been so successful in business, chairman of a football club, you're a bit of a one of the lads, aren't you, at times? Well, Caroline, all right, if he's not, he doesn't want to answer that, I don't think. Well, is he, is he just a, a very ordinary? Yeah, it's really, uh, except for when he's driving his Bentley, it, I always call it a Bentley driver head. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, move out of the way. <laughs> no, no, he's not really. Um, but you know, he is really down to earth, and you know, that, that's I think, you know, that's really important in life. It, you know, we are all human beings, and he is uber successful. Um, I'm a bit blushing now. Tony, I was born, at, born in Kingsmill Hospital and grew up in Mansfield, so I'm fine. And you're a shy brook lad originally. Is that, yeah, is that right? Is well, that what yeah, you, yeah, you, yeah, First few years of my life in Shybrook, I. As they're listening now, they're, they're, they're getting in the car, they're, they're, they're at home, they're waiting to, to come in by, by bus or whatever, the fans, the, the people that, that this club is really all about, isn't it? You know, yeah. it, this is their cathedral. Absolutely. Yeah. This is it, you yeah. know. Um, they're nervous. Come yeah. on, you stags. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make you do that little dance again. What are you, you know, what are you, what are you going to say to them now? They're nervous. They, they're, today's they're, about today's about enjoying yourself. Same as Paul says, yeah. enjoy yourself. Get behind the team, and let's get this at the atmosphere. Positive visualization. Yeah. Well, let's try not to have a nervous situation in the stadium yeah. and a, a calm. Let's have a carnival atmosphere. Yeah. And, and then go. and then we'll really have a carnival atmosphere at about. Seven. Yeah, <laughs> let's just keep it carnival all the way through. <laughs> there, there's, yeah. a, there's a, a vibrance, there's a, there's a feeling, isn't there, a, about the place? Can you feel a sort of tense, no, no, tenseness, yeah. but a In warmness? A yeah, it, 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 but it could all. Ooh, no, we're not going to talk about we that. No, it's not no. going to go like that, Tony. Let's just keep the carnival atmosphere going. So yeah. you know, I, very I, least it's the playoffs anyway. So that, yeah. that, uh, are you suspicious, Carolyn Radford? Superstitious. Yeah. You mean? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'm very suspicious. That's why I'm sat like this. Are you superstitious, Caroline? Yeah, you, I'll, you know, I had my um, I had my cup of tea today with my two sugars and my toast, and you know, regardless if I want if I want jam on it, I'm not having jam. I've got to just have butter on it. It's bad you luck know, to have jam. Bad for luck. I haven't made any Facebook comments actually for months and months now because. Um, it, I, I'm superstitious that if I put anything like, oh, come on, boys, um, hope you do well today, that we, it's going to mess up. So uh, hopefully at 7.15 I can just do a yay, <laughs> you know. But no, I, I've heard all sorts of suspicious things. You've got your lucky pants, haven't you? Uh, and, uh, yeah. What are they? <laughs> Take us through that, the lucky pants. No, they've gone now. No, no, <laughs> what, what, what were they, these lucky pants? Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know, they're in a, a bin in Braintree. <laughs> <laughs> well, he took his pants off afterwards and flung them away. Hope not. After the Braintree defeat. <laughs> <down there. laughs> <laughs> Superstitious, John? No. Not at all? No. I, I went through a season of being su superstitious. Um, I think the players have got to go, they've got to do their job on the field, and we've got to do our job as fans and support them while they're out there, and be very positive and behind them. How different is your feeling on this day for the way you felt prior to the, 
the big match with Liverpool when there was all the sort of rah, TV cameras, everything else. How diff is, is it a bit similar in some ways? Um, I guess so. I mean, you know, Liverpool was just such a special occasion anyway, um, whereas this is so much more important. But Liverpool you know. was an event and a carnival yeah. and, and a day that we could enjoy. This today is a business and the it business is. and the sharp end of the business. And we've this got to go in there, do the job and, you know, this is, you know, the whole season is rested. I always said this, it'll go down to the last game of the season and I hoped it wouldn't, you know, but uh, it, has. it has done. Um, and, uh, but so be it and uh, we'll go out there and play our hearts out and um, the boys will not let you down. Some time ago, uh, um, I, I rang Paul Cox after, uh, it was during the spell when things weren't going too well, you know, and it, uh, I thought, I thought, you know, maybe if I, you know, I'll ring, you know, reporter, commentator, whatever, and say, you know, are you okay, Paul? He lives in the street where I used to, used to live, we're, 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 we're friends, and I said, uh, are you okay? Are you feeling under pressure? He said, no, the chairman's just rung me. He said he, he took the trouble to ring me from abroad to say, are you all right, Paul? Are you okay? I said, you, did you feel threatened by a chairman's call? Because it, it, there's a famous saying, the chairman's vote of confidence is just before, before you get the bullet. That's a, a famous saying in, in, in sport. He said, no, he, he lifted me. The chairman lifted me. Have you done that often? I, do you see that as a role? I tend to have to do it at the beginning of the season for Paul, but uh, yeah, of course it is. You've got to you've got to give your managers confidence and uh, let them know that uh, they've got your support. And you know, it's it's our job, you know, sometimes to because you know, uh, uh, parts in the season there was a few fans calling for us to get rid of Paul, Paul Cox, but that was never the majority, Tony. The, you know, uh, most most of our fans stu stuck behind him, and I, I I take that into consideration and. You know, he 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 does exactly what he says he's going to do and what he says he's going to do on the tin, and it's and I could see that it was building. And you know, when I sat down in the beginning of the season, I, I, we realised why we made the mistakes. We we tried to make the, the squad too big and had too much in the t too many too many too many players to please. And but he's got it right now. So. How do you think he's? He, you know him pretty well now. You even arranged for his wedding. I'm not sure whether you didn't make sure it happened, but yeah, yeah it, it, it did happen. And uh, you gave him a car, yeah? Mm. You're friends as well, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. But how's he feeling now? I mean, he puts on, he, he's like the swan going across the water. It looks very serene. And I wonder whether the flippers underneath are going like mad. How's he feeling? Um, very composed, like you said, on the, on the surface. And uh, he's very professional. But it's a very, 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 um, you know, emotional time at the moment. Um, it's it's something that um, he wants so badly, and um, you know he's completely, as are the rest of the boys, you know, dedicated to the task at, ha at hand. And uh, uh, you know, sometimes I just want to put my arms around him and you know say, "Come on, you know, you can do it." Um, uh, Would you mind that, John? If you put your arms around, no, around no, me? No, no, we're no, we're no, friends. No. You know, we're it's, friends. It's, it's um, it's it's you know, and Natasha as well. You know. It's, it's, you know, Natasha and I are each other's rocks sometimes, you know, we go through really, really difficult times with uh, these men that we've got involved with that are involved in football. Um, and, um, you know, it's, it, it can be, it goes from day to day and uh, it's, it's a very difficult job, um, very difficult job and, uh, you know, highly scrutinised. Um, and, uh, but I have every confidence in Paul and, you know, really hope that he remains with us. What do you think Tasha's feeling today? Natasha, how is she feeling? Um, she'll be late. Um, she'll have gone and waited in McDonald's car park if she's early. <laughs> because uh, she has all these superstitions that she has to get chips on a Tuesday uh, from the chippy um, <laughs> with her sister Kelly. Um, and she, you know, she has a, she, but she's absolutely incredible and she's a real rock to Paul as well. Um, and, uh, I think she'll, she's really going to be feeling it as well, um, uh, you know, as we all are out there. Um, but, you know, um, hopefully we'll have a, smi a smile on our face. Yeah, a little bit later today. I know you're going to be wanting to get to, get to, 
the John into wardrobe and getting yeah, get, get, <laughs> get, yeah. get him get him suitably attired to <laughs> to to meet the Wrexham directors and uh, and uh, and everybody else. Um, I, I'd love you to say a word or, or, or two to for some of the people who work with you behind the scenes as well, because you've got you run the uh, the, the behind the scenes organisation, which has yeah. changed somewhat. Which we can't we you know we can't do without uh, Tina and Paul, absolute godsend. You know, um, the really we've got a great guy in the kitchen joe we've got beck in the ticket office we've got dan you know that oversees everything mez you know they these guys go to every away game you know More they travel the island. country paul nyland so dedicated you know to, to to the club um you know there's just so many people involved you know obviously the playing staff and all the footballers that um you know are part of our church um and um you know we couldn't we couldn't um, make this work at all if we didn't have those people that actually have the the passion and the, the want the club to succeed as badly as we do. Um, and they're great. Thank you so much. How powerful do you think fan power is today? Fans, uh, I fan, think, uh, fan chanting, fan... fan they, they, oh they, they put an extra man on the pitch. Absolutely. Yeah, they do. They put an extra man on Our the pitch. Our fans are absolutely fantastic. Dedicated, you know, it makes me, it gives me goosebumps, you know, when I see them. You know, you've got Dean on the SSA, you know, all the buses that, that travel to all these far fetched destinations, off Lung even. <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, they're, they're the atmosphere, you know, and when they're on fire and, you know, get behind the team, it's just absolutely wonderful. And, you know, we thank you so much. There honestly. used to be a banner, didn't there, that said, in John Radford, we trust. And now today, John Radford, Carolyn Radford, you've got to trust your manager, your team, your fans, etc., to get over that very final hurdle. Let's hope I we thought can you do weren't it. superstitious. Oh, last cross the fingers. <laughs> <laughs> now let's hope we can do it today, Tony. And let's hope we're celebrating. And you can have an interview with me afterwards. Uh. But I might be a little bit tipsy. <laughs> I won't be though, so you can come to me. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why. Okay, Tony. Thank you very much. <laughs> 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 Good to see you. Cheers.